Sugar. Our ancestors died for it. Guyana was built on it. Before gold, our black gold, once the pillar of our economy and our main export, the Chateau Margot chimney still rises eight miles from Georgetown, over 130 years old, long after plantations became villages as a reminder of our sugar heritage. Guyana, like a confection, was made from sweet. By the mid 1630s, the Dutch colony of Essequibo had begun to plant sugar cane. In 1637, a small shipment of cane syrup was sent from Essequibo to Zeeland in the Netherlands. At this time, sugar was not refined locally. Unlike other European colonies in the Caribbean, the sugar industry here developed very slowly. A push came in the 1650s with an arrival of Dutchmen, many of whom were Jews from Brazil. It was from this period, especially from 1661, that sugar seems to have been exported regularly to the Netherlands. It was not until the 18th century after 1720 that a fairly thriving sugar industry developed in Guyana. This was particularly as a result of the British occupation of these colonies in 1796. Englishmen were impressed by the fertility and potential of the comparatively virgin soil of Burbies and Demerara Essequibo, especially when compared to the older British colonies in the Caribbean, such as Barbados and Antigua. Also, the British used their dominance of the transatlantic traffic in captive Africans to supply Burbies and Demerara Essequibo with slaves without restrictions. This improved labor supply resulted in the establishment of new, bigger plantations and increased agricultural production. So remarkable was the transformation that by 1800, Burbies and Demerara Essequibo had become the second largest producer of sugar in the British West Indies. By the time the colonies were officially British Guyana in 1831, sugar had been the pillar of the Guyanese economy since the 1820s. However, around 1884, the industry fell into crisis, mainly due to the effective competition from European beet sugar. By the 1900s, British Guyana's economy had begun to diversify, partly driven by the sugar crisis. Industries like gold mining and rice cultivation advanced, with diamond mining making its debut, reducing the total domination of the export market by sugar and its byproducts, rum and molasses. 1900 also marked the rise of Booker Brothers, who merged with John McConnell, forming a partnership that would eventually dominate our sugar and economic industry for decades. King Sugar was slowly becoming a prince, and by 1900s held a commanding but reduced presence in Guyana's export market. This was the time that the chimney functioned. Still standing at the front of the village, which shares its name, the date July 1, 1889, is inscribed on the clay brick structure, making it one of the oldest chimneys in the country. The chimney is the solitary remains of a 19th century sugar factory, and it is believed to be one of three chimneys. The weekly Argosy of 1883 described the plantation as having boasted the finest cane land in the colony of British Guyana during the 19th century, operating successfully on the vacuum pan process for many years. Constructed by Bricklayer and Lemo Garden from the village of Buxton, the chimney is made of red bricks and sits on a giant concrete base. In addition to its industrial functions, it served as a beacon to ships approaching the port of Georgetown, continuing this secondary duty even after the factory closed. Presently, the Chateau Margot chimney has a new calling, representing the resilience of the people of the Mosquito Coast. Surviving wars, still summoning the sky, and proudly wearing the ravages of time, the Chateau Margot chimney symbolizes the sugar industry that united not only the three counties of Burbies, Essequibo, and Demerara, but our ancestors, who came or were ripped from different parts of the world that now make up the beautiful and diverse nation of Guyana.